trade my gauntlets for a hot drink. This is no mortal, I see. Strange, you take the guise of a source hunter. But I shall, of course, honor your chosen form. Indeed, I suppose I should have expected that one of your kind would snare our brother sooner or later. Boreas always did dance uncomfortably close to the dark arts. But I suppose the others of we elemental monarchs thought it better not to interfere in the affairs of his realm. No, like fools, we waited for his pride, his hunger for more and ever more power, to pull us from our own seats of safety and into his sordid storm. We, and with us all the subjects of the realm of fairy, do owe you our lives, Source Hunter. If no, not if, but when. We might be of assistance to you in this dimension. You must call upon me personally. Source Hunter, it would be my sincerest honor. Take this room and use it to summon me when you're near the witch once more. If she can be extracted from Boreas Ice, I'll find a way to make it so. We best be on our way then. The spring and autumn kingdoms won't rule themselves, you know. May our paths cross soon, Source Hunter.
I've tried my very best, and will try and try anew. But so far this damnable ice scoffs at my every effort. That is wonderful. My faith in you as ever well placed. At your leisure, Source Hunter. Though for Akara's sake we ought not to dilly-dally too long. The White Witch is quickly growing a whiter shade of pale indeed. It seems the Winter King has woven ice too rare and powerful for mere fire. I don't know how long she'll last within that ice. There must be a way. Damnation! Not even a crack! It seems the Winter King has woven ice too rare and powerful for mere fire. I don't know how long she'll last within that ice. There must be a way. Damnation! Not even a crack! It seems the Winter King has woven ice too rare and powerful for mere fire. I don't know how long she'll last within that ice. 
There must be a way. Damnation! Not even a crack! It seems the Winter King has woven ice too rare and powerful for mere fire. I don't know how long she'll last within that ice. There must be a way. Damnation! Not even a crack! It seems the Winter King has woven ice too rare and powerful for mere fire. I don't know how long she'll last within that ice. There must be a way. Damnation! Not even a crack! It seems the Winter King has woven ice too rare and powerful for mere fire. I don't know how long she'll last within that ice. There must be a way. This is your White Witch, then. And you're sure you want to free her, are you? Even our mad Boreas wouldn't have wasted such precious ice on a petty criminal. Whatever she did to find herself here must have been rather severe indeed. But I am in your debt, and I would be remiss not to honor your request. Shield your eyes, Source Hunter, to melt ice. Of this refinement, I'll need to summon an equally rare flame. Gods, it's colder than a witch's teat. How very callous of Leandra to inter her only sister in a barren tundra for eternity. Ikara, you're all right? The ice. King Boreas, and your sister. What a frigid hell you've endured. And yet not even a frigid hell like this could induce you to put on a shirt, could it, Ahu? My old friend, surely I have you to thank for my salvation. That honor goes to a pair of talented source hunters, actually. If not for their efforts, I'd be quite uselessly prowling around your prison still. Then perhaps I ought to address my savior directly. <laughs> Source Hunter, is that the masquerade? Well, what a motley crew we are. Isn't there somewhere a bit warmer we might discuss matters? Ah, yes, of course, of course. <clears throat> Do pardon me. I didn't mean to imply you were very clearly eternal beings in the guise of minor mortals, not at all. Please, let's do carry on. Oh, oh, yes, yes, I suppose I am. But I do prefer my given name. Ikara, that is. Charmed. But I hope I haven't disappointed my own hero. Am I just as white and witchy as you'd hoped? First things first, Source Hunter. For my freedom, I owe you every imaginable thanks. My soul had withered in this prison, and I might not have survived much longer without your help. Now, about the culprits. My corrupted sister and the mad Winter King. When I realized exactly where, and to whom Leandra was consigning me, 
I was certain I'd never enjoy the sun's warmth again. But neither she nor I anticipated the Source Hunter. That was her mistake, and my blessing. I never would have imagined Leandra capable of dealing with the likes of Boreas, but she has changed into someone I hardly recognize anymore. My own little sister, if you can imagine it. She was always the more ambitious, the more exacting of us, and she had no fear of the darkness that so often accompanies Source. Her collusion with King Boreas in imprisoning me here confirms my worst fears. She is planning something far greater than I could have anticipated. For this reason, and with a heavy heart, I must ask you, Source Hunter, to find out how far exactly Leandra has become entwined in the Dark Arts. I take no pleasure in the memory of that night. The thought of hurting anyone or anything is abhorrent to me. But in this case, I judged it necessary. If you've come this far, I trust you've learned that the Counselor was far from a humble civil servant. This doesn't excuse my behavior, but perhaps it can help to explain it. It's a sordid story, to be perfectly frank. Two sisters, a philandrous, treacherous wizard, death and mayhem. <laughs> Are you sure you're interested in such things? The sparkle in your eye belies your better nature, Source Hunter. Now I know that it is your duty to get to the heart of this. And, in truth, the events of that night were but one part of a larger and much darker matter. A matter in which I'll dare to beg your assistance before we're through with one another. Now that terrible night... One night, as I slept, I had a sudden revelation. No dream, but a vision. My sister Leandra and my lover Zandalor. I didn't understand, but I recognized their location. Sysiel's King Crab Inn. I arrived and looked through their window. But inside, everything was wrong. Leandra had fled, and Counselor Jake stood over the wizard, a knife in his hand and hate in his eyes. As I watched, he drove the dagger deep into Zandalor's heart, and I was too late to stop him. In that moment, I broke. I saw before me not a man, not even a beast, but evil incarnate. And I used Source to slay him. On the floor lay Zandalor. In my hands I held Jake's life force. I had sworn never to use Source, but I couldn't walk away. And so I did the unthinkable. I used the Counselor's life to save Zandalor's. He was alive, but only just. Betrayal. Murder. Source. We were all of us guilty now. If you were any other Source Hunter, I suppose you'd strike me down where I stand after that terrible admission. Fortunately for us both, you are no other Source Hunter. I hate to extend my own invitation, Source Hunter, but I believe I ought to accompany you to Zigzax's hideout. Presumptuous, yes, but I'd recognize the imp's essence just about anywhere. Both he and you must learn more about the darkness that has extended itself into our dearest Rivalon. And I believe I know where we must begin. Ah, but unless that's a bear flailing through the threads of time, I do believe Master Zigzax is on his way. Make way, Source Hunter, landing in three, two... Hunters, you've done it! Ikara is free! Ah, what good it does my impish heart to see her safe and bright as ever! We have much to discuss! 
come one and all to the end of time. A spot of something warm and the soft glow of the tapestry ought to do us all a bit of good, hmm? Rikara, now, if we're done playing hide and seek, let's not waste a jot more time. Oh, I just can't wait to pick your every synapse. After you, Master Zigzax. So that's the White Witch, eh? I expected someone a little more... evil. I can't say I'd cut her down from a stake, but she sure has fewer horns than I expected. Walgroff stands transfixed. He doesn't seem to be as much perplexed by Ikara's witchiness as by her almost otherworldly beauty. We've solved the murder and caught the culprit, yet this case feels anything but closed. We'll have to learn more before we can assess Ikara's true guilt in this matter. Fortunately, she seems quite eager to tell us more about this entire dark affair. Aha! The Starstone Seekers return! Most fortuitous indeed! For I have been pondering over the nature of our shelter plane like a poet over his muse. For now, I will refrain from entertaining or, as the case may be, annoying you with hapless conjectures until in the maze that is my mind, I happen to stumble upon a clue more concrete than mere theory. In the meantime, and in the interest of saving time, uh, please tell me your thoughts about the lady you talked to in the Hall of Heroes during your previous visit. Deceive. Desert. Your words, they ring a distant bell, but uh, they are but pieces of the puzzle. Uh, and yet, could she be? But no, hold your chattering tongue, Zigzag. You promised you wouldn't hazard any guesses, and you'll stick to your word. You have my thanks, friends, for indulging me. A new portal has opened, and no doubt you are as curious as I am to find out what lies beyond. Let's... represents all of time. One wouldn't think time itself would include so many threads. This place looks rather cozy, doesn't it? It does. By the fangs of the void, it is true. She told me she had seen you. Yet never would I have believed her delusions until... Here, now, they manifest before me. You have become undeniable. The scurrilous sentinels themselves. It is miraculous, irrefutably so. But oh, how low you have fallen. Look at what you have become. What was stars have become moribund embers. You... you are to be pitted. A demon? And none too friendly either. I know it to be mine, but how?
Zandalore have always been close, are you? Pray tell, did you know anything about his affair at the King Crab? Come now. Do you really think he'd let me in on it in advance if he'd been pla- Why? I see Master Zigzax has upgraded from his shabby little hut at the edge of the hour, from the fairy dimension to the, um, space-time weaver hunter imp one. What do you call this place again? Ha! Is that so? It seems I have my share to learn about the magical world yet. The end of time. Well, suddenly your association with Master Zigzax makes sense. Well, I must say, it's no small relief to find myself in a safe haven among such allies. I believe the answer to that begins centuries ago, when your order were still cutting down so-called dark magicians by the dozens. Ours was a family of born sorcerers, you see. It was in our blood to interact with Source, but our parents were determined to curb the power within us. Still, their meekness wouldn't save them from the Source Hunters. I am, but there is more to our kind than they teach at your academy. Source isn't only blood and madness. It's like lightning, an exquisite current of great power. We Sorcerers are like metal steeples. Source is drawn to us and it flows through us. But what so many fail to understand is that Source can be controlled. The power drunk through history have abused it, and all the world's sorcerers have borne terrible consequences. Tell me, Source Hunter, in all your hours studying the arcane arts, did your great masters ever suggest that perhaps not all sorcerers were evil? Did you ever hear, even once, that some of us were weak and gentle, that we could be simple forest folk healing the sick and frozen each winter. No, I doubt also that they'd mention that one day this hunt of yours would birth a broken soul powerful enough to inch all of Rivalon toward oblivion. No, no, that would be going too far and eschewing my own responsibility. I believe Leandra's long fall down did begin at the hands of some of your own order, but it was I who sparked all of this. They came on a quiet morning. My mother was wild with fright and commanded me to hide myself and Leandra outside, among the trees. Even at that young age we knew not to question her. We climbed high into the branches of a nearby tree. And before we could look away, our parents were cut down without ceremony before our door. The Source Hunters sauntered away, wiping their blades with pride. Two more sorcerers dead, a job well done. From that moment on, everything was different. As we trembled in that tree, our fear and our desperation were so potent that the magic within us began to weave together. Our souls became forged together. Our bond unbreakable. We would survive, thrive even, within those woods, never speaking to outsiders. Our soul forge meant that if one of us were to die, the other would instantly perish too. We kept one another close. Leandra's capacity was... enormous. Source didn't frighten her, and she delved into that dark well with terrible regularity. I did my best to guide her but she fast outgrew my admonitions. My sister and I were mired in a solitary existence, witches among the trees when Zandalor came. Leandra especially couldn't leave him be. He was a feast of information, and she wouldn't rest until she'd absorbed every bit of knowledge he offered. Their days were spent on charms, hexes and the like. At night, Leandra would wander off to practice what she'd learned and Zandalor and I would settle into our quiet tasks, side by side. We were a content trio, the three of us, but base impulse would undo us. As you know, Leandra and I were soul-forged. This offered us a window into one another's souls. I knew Leandra had developed feelings for Zandalor, and she knew I had too. But it was me to whom he confessed his love. 
Those quiet evenings together had captured his heart, as they had mine. Her heart broke the moment we announced our new attachment, and I felt the pain of it as sharply as a knife. She fled, without a word, and I didn't see her for two terrible years. My connection to her, our soul forge, grew weaker. It was as though some third entity, a parasite, were atop our souls, sucking the strength from it day by day. We've a single order of business first and foremost. Leandra is gathering an army, and I fear we'll have to get through it if we wish to find her. But first, we must learn more about Leandra's plans. How many of these so-called Immaculates does she have in her palm, and to what end is she directing them? Your journey must begin in the Lakula Mines, where she has been accumulating materials and manpower for a purpose as yet unknown. The way will be dangerous. Her allies are growing more powerful and numerous by the minute. But we must discover exactly what Leandra is planning, and why. A soul forge comes with its own benefits, Sorsanta. Though our connection has weakened, I still see the occasional vision of Leandra's doings, the pangs of her deepest felt emotions, and flashes of her triumphs. One vision. I had thought it was only a nightmare, but now I see it was something much worse. Leandra is collecting materials, precisely what, I cannot say, and is hard at work shaping them into something... something sinister. Her frustrations are rivaled only by her mirth. I can see she's growing closer and closer to achieving something... something dire. You must make your way deep into the mines to see exactly what she's planning. I believe that our soul forge has been damaged. By what? I can only guess. The fraying of the bond between us has left Leandra adrift in a well of sorrow she truly believes will never end. What she needs is a hand. My hand, out of this abyss. If our soul forge is repaired, I am certain she'll cease blazing this path of destruction. I cannot condone the terrible things she's done, but I can seek to understand them. With our soul forge in such tatters, I believe Leandra is adrift in the not at all inconsiderable sorrows of our lives. What's more, I sense a terrible force bearing down upon the bond between us. It is hungry, and it consumes ever more of Leandra's mind and soul. I cannot say exactly what this force might be, but I'm certain it's both driving me out and driving Leandra on. If I could only repair the forge, I'm certain she'd put a stop to this madness. The way may be treacherous, but you must get inside. I fear my sister is doing something dreadful so far from the light of day. I have seen the void, and it haunts me. It follows my vision like confused spots after staring in the sun. We are haunted by the same vision, my friend. The end of all visions. But only in the dark can light be born. Let us cling to that and hope.
Walgrove spotted a trap. gate bars the way quite decisively. The heavy door doesn't give way to any pressure applied. A rune in the center appears to be its only obvious feature. The rune grows warmer. It reacts to the sound of your voice. As you speak, Sadakandras, the doors in low and behold, with the scream...